Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com, the most amazing website that exists in my mind. My name is Jason Newland, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. At the moment, Andre is asleep in his bag, his favourite little bag that he sleeps in a lot of the time. I'm hoping he's going to stay there, not forever, but you know, for the duration of this recording. But I can already hear him stirring. He's got a thing, I don't know, it's... It's almost like he can hear me press the record button and suddenly his eyes open and his ears prick up. It's like, oh, I can now annoy my daddy. That will get him back for giving me that bath. I can hear him moving already. And he hasn't, I haven't seen him for at least an hour. So, what was I going to say? So, yeah, only listen when you can safely close your eyes. If you would like to support me, um, my PayPal is paypal.me forward slash Jason Newland. And I'd like to thank the person that uh, sent me some money yesterday. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And every little bit helps because I am on benefits, benefits, unemployment or whatever due to illness and I I don't make any money from these recordings, I don't have any advertising, I don't, I don't ask for donations because I'm not a charity so I try and you know, I'm not a business either, so I don't, I don't sell any products, but I do have uh, outlay for running this free service. You know, podcast hosts and website costs and stuff like that. <laughs> God, that was boring, wasn't it? So. Yesterday, I was going to talk about the National Enquirer that I bought, and I can't be bothered to talk about it today. I can't. It's the other side of the room, and it means getting up and walking over there, and which is what one, two, three, four, probably four steps. <laughs> it's not exactly uh, well. It's, it's a fair distance. Oh, because my feet, or my legs rather, are 22 foot long. So that's big elephant steps, or giraffe steps really, wouldn't it be? I wonder how long a giraffe's legs are. 22 foot, do you think? It should really be 22 legs, shouldn't it, not feet. You should only measure feet in feet. Then it would just be one foot, wouldn't it? What what size are your feet? They're a foot. Each. Each one's a foot. One foot. Because I'm not an ant. Well, I'm not sure what that means. very tired, very tired. It's quite strange, well it's not enough, ah, well, everything's strange but I started putting, uh, updating the stats on my website for the daily podcasts, so put on how many 
podcasts, downloads I get a day, and I've got it every every pretty much every day listed on there since last November in 2018 November I also at the very top of the page in the the first page on my website I update the total downloads and also the total mp3s are available it's quite weird because it was only like three, three days ago I put on Facebook that I'd reached uh, 500,000, half a million um, downloads since last November. So it's like 11 months. And now I've, I've uh, updated it and it's now 509,242 downloads. It's just that's gone up by nearly ten thousand just in a few days. It's like wow. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's one of the one of my little happy little moments when I update the stats, when I update because it's probably there more for me, just because I like to look at them. But it, I find it motivating. I think it's almost like when I used to work in sales. So I used to sell car insurance in a previous existence. And the stats were very important to the companies. So I worked for three different insurance companies, uh, as well as I sold mobile phone contracts as well. So I had four full-time sales jobs and stats were important conversions you know how many uh, quotes I did per call how many sales I did per call how many sales I did per quote blah 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 and uh, my stats I'll use the first job I had the first insurance job Um, well actually I'll talk about I don't know if I've ever talked about my sales jobs before, but if this doesn't send you to sleep, nothing will. Nothing. So, and I think I'm not going to put a description of this recording because I don't know if a description could put people off. <laughs> I think maybe it's just nice to have the surprise, not know what's coming, even though you know it's going to be boring you don't know what's coming and I've the last couple of days I've put in a description and I don't know if that was particularly a good idea I don't know I don't know I'm not sure I'll also I'm going off topic this is sometimes the only conversation I have in a day <laughs> this is so me talking here it's almost seemed like it's my journal it was like my online diary you can't be writing dear diary I went to the toilet again still feels nice and I just just, just continuously I can't I used to write stuff down I kept journals from 19, uh, what year was it? I think it was 1989 until 2011. Yeah, I think that's how long I kept journals for. So it's quite a while. Now, I wasn't full on the whole time. I went through periods. So sometimes, you know, I've I filled a whole 200 pad, uh, writing pad, you know, A4 size. I've done one of those in a week once. Um, and other times it could take months to do a 200 page pad. 
so he's sometimes a year you know just depended um, on my what I was doing in life my moods what the reason why I was writing because and I destroyed them all in 2011 and I had the pads from the floor upwards probably yeah went up to my waist so there was quite a few thousands and thousands of pages of my writing and I got rid of them all destroyed ripped them all up in 2011 and I think it was November 2011 what happened I just uh, it doesn't matter but yeah I, I destroyed them anyway and partly a side effect of the medication that I just started taking and just my behaviour really just it happened and in 1989 I was sitting in a chair and at that time we're talking probably uh, summer or summer maybe May April I don't know who's I can't remember but it was anyway it was in, it was in 1989 it was beginning of the summer I think maybe you know spring time so my job would you believe this my job was looking after a little kid while her parents did the night shift at a factory that I used to work at now I was working there during the day when I met these two and I left that job to go and live in Spain and I went to Spain and I was there for an afternoon and then I came back and I had nowhere to live and the these two friends, they, they offered me t uh, a deal. I could stay with them, but I would look after, yeah, because I don't think they were on night shift. They, they were on, I think they were on day shifts, but night shift paid more. So they went on to night shift. I stayed there and babysat the child at night. And then I could live there for free and they'd give me a little bit of money and let me eat and I'd eat and stuff I've always found that I needed to eat it's one of those things quite a continuous thing that is and I I basically yeah yeah I was sleeping in the living room didn't have a bedroom sleeping in the living room and then I would get up at well I'd, I'd take the little girl to school so her mum would come home and you know get her out of bed and get her all ready for, for school and I would walk her to school because then her, her parents would go to bed to go to sleep And I can't remember if I would pick her up from school or not, I don't recall. And probably not, I don't know. But it didn't really work out very well because I had, well, I didn't have enough money to live on. I basically just didn't have any any cash to do anything with. 
so I got a, a part time job as a cleaner in a supermarket which was literally just across the road which was handy and I used to do that from 6 to 8 or something for 2 hours I come home and then I take the little girl to to school and or was it half 6 I don't know half cool. I it was it, it, it fitted in with when they got back and when I went out yeah so it kind of fitted together and what they did and I didn't know they were going to be doing is they would come home during their lunch break at like 2 o'clock in the morning and watch television for an hour or you know come home and have something to eat so I'd be woken up so I didn't really get any sleep proper sleep for the the period that I lived there so it wasn't really ideal but at least it gave me somewhere to sleep kind of for a little while but while I was there I had this little niggle little niggle in my head a little tiny little niggle like a little voice it wasn't really a voice but an idea I should write something because it didn't feel like I had any identity didn't really know who I was but I did want to find out and I I was never really a big fan of other people trying to push their opinions and belief systems onto me and the way that it seemed that pretty much everybody uh, especially older people which most people were at that time because I was well, 18 and most of the people that I was around rather they seemed to be very definite in their opinions as if it wasn't an opinion but it was a fact very factual very this is how it is this is what I say um, and I never felt comfortable with that and I still don't feel comfortable with that I like the the flexibility of new knowledge being able to change the way that we think about a particular thing you know instead of just sticking to an old idea because that is I guess it feels comfortable I don't know yeah probably and I'm in no doubt that I do it loads myself so I'm <laughs> very much uh I guess stuck in my ways in a lot of different avenues but on the same side I do like to try and reduce as many of my uh, opinions and beliefs those limiting things those definite ideas try to loosen them if I can if I can't eliminate them, at least loosen the, the nuts and bolts a little bit. So there's a bit of a bit of give, you know? A bit of stretch. And uh, 
I'd like to introduce that a little bit with some of my work that I do online. Maybe not with these recordings, but with some of the other stuff I do to create maybe a different way of thinking or to introduce or offer or give, an eye, give a few ideas, you know, a few suggestions, a few ideas to maybe look at things differently, try it on if you want without the uh, telling people this is this, this is this some kind of uh, like it's the only way it can be so yeah <sighs> so at that time I thought I want to write stuff I want to I want to write down my thoughts because I was having some thoughts and I was wondering I kind of wondered are they my thoughts or are they just um, am I just repeating what other people have said to me in my mind you know is it just other people's prejudices and opinions and stuff like that and limited thinking so I went I got myself a pad and I put it off for a few weeks I thought I'm going to do that but I was just couldn't be bothered then one day I went to the stationery shop I can't remember the name of it but I bought this pad and it had I think it had an orange cover pretty sure it had an orange cover and I bought a I think it was a blue pen or a black pen, but it wasn't a Bic, it was, uh, I don't think it was, it might have been, but I think it was more of a felt pen, like one of the nice ones that you can write with really nicely. I've got one here actually, not, not in my hand, or in my pocket, or in my backpack that I'm wearing. It's not even tucked, you know, it's not even tucked into the hat a bowler hat that I'm wearing but it's somewhere I wonder if it's no it's not balanced on my hiking shoes I think it's over on the bookcase near the tortoise so I bought this book this pad it was it's basically a refill pad you know one of those with uh, holes in the side and you can put into one of those um, refill po folder things you know the ones that click when you close them uh, like the metal ring ring binders I said I knew there was a name you know get to me eventually ring ring that's it ring binders and I I'm not sure what I wrote on the front of it um, but I just I think I wrote the date which would be I would say May two, uh, not 2000 May 1989 the 14th of May Tuesday or whatever it was how weird would that be if the 14th of May was actually a Tuesday I feel like I want to check now. Oh, I wonder how strange would that be? Because I generally don't have that memory in my memory. So, by the way, I'm not recording this inside my recording studio. it in my living room 
I might continue to make the Let Me Bore You To Sleep recordings out here. And maybe use the recording studio for the the ones that need to be really quiet background wise. I, I know these do as well, but I quite like sitting in my chair, and this chair wouldn't even fit inside the shed, the garden shed that's in my bedroom which is being converted into a recording studio and it will be, it's going to look good it doesn't really matter what it looks like I suppose but it's going to I know what I want to do I know what I want it to be like and it's going to be I think once it's done because my friend has got a light to put in it which will attach through the top of the shed and we shall brighten it up and then I'll look at possibly making videos but I don't know if I want to make videos anymore I prefer to be able to just like it doesn't matter what I look like doesn't matter what I'm wearing doesn't matter what my hair is like when I'm making an audio recording but when I'm making a video for some reason that stuff is kind of important that I put a little bit of effort into personal appearance which I haven't done today because my beard is now growing back like you know the proper beard that I that I have fairly often I haven't had that for a few months because I've been trimming it and making it like nice and neat well since last week I kind of gave up on it and just decided well I just haven't bothered uh, trimming my neck or you trimming around the beard so it's just basically growing into a big bushy mound again and in a way I quite prefer it when I look at myself in the mirror I prefer myself with a beard than without a beard or with a big big juicy beard rather than just a little tiny I don't know it's like like a little landing pad you know I, I want it to be I don't want a Brazilian wax on my face I want it to I like it just being uh, natural and I've naturally, I think I'm naturally a beardy person. I'm naturally going to have a big beard. And I suppose for a little while I was thinking for a few weeks that maybe I was going to be possibly in a relationship and I should perhaps keep the beard trimmed down. So, because I've heard that a lot of ladies don't like beards because it, they like kissing men with beards. And I'm just generalising on every single woman that I've ever met that's told me that. But yeah, you know, now that I'm, I kind of thinking, ah, I'm just going to have a beard. Because Andre likes it when I got a beard because he, it's almost like it. It's another little ferret for him to rub himself against. He does. He loves rubbing his his head and his face against my chin when I've got a beard. Doesn't do it so much when it's short, but when it's bushy, he loves it. He's. 
I don't know, he he's just likes it. So I think I'm going to let it grow. Really grow. And I might let my hair really grow long. Just over the winter period. See what happens. Because I do look different when I go wild. But my hair is so curly. When it gets past a certain level, it goes really curly. Because I've got thick, curly hair. Which it doesn't show when it's short. But when it starts growing, wow. And my hair grows quickly as well. I'm all, I like one of those little dolls. You know the dolls that you, you push down on the head and the, the hair just pushes up out. I think it's like make a plaster scene or something. Or Play-Doh. And oh, I thought Andre was going to come out then. So I've got kind of hair like that. I mean, it doesn't, it's not made of plasticine or Play-Doh. Although, how good would that be? Imagine if our hair was made of Play-Doh. You could literally have a different style every day. And you could just peel it off your head, push it back in the back of your head, and then squeeze it out into a different style. I think I'll have braids today. Ah, oh, this this uh, this lady that I used to be in love with, she and um, I remember she she came in. I think she she worked in this place, and I was just besotted with her. It's really weird. It's almost I just you know you can't help who you who you fall for, can you? anyway she had her hair braided very much like not normally but on this particular day and I think it was Halloween and so I think she must have been going to a Halloween party or something and she looked amazing she wasn't dressed up as a, a monster but even if she was dressed up as a monster she'd be still be still would have been the most attractive monster and um, that's <laughs> weird, weird sentence, but do you remember Bo Derek in is it ten? The film Ten. Bo Derek it, her hair was braided like that. I'm talking about her head. And I was like, Wow. So I do admire women um actually for lots of different reasons, but for the hair to be able to very experimental with hair and I've not been very experimental myself but I quite would have liked to have been and even though I've never been manly or macho or any of that stupid stuff I still kind of conformed a fair bit uh, just because it just makes life a bit easier but I would have liked to have um, I did a few different hairstyles back in 1986 maybe 87 flat tops they were called flat tops uh, were really popular I'm trying to think of who who had a flat top hairstyle that made it so popular but possibly some pop stars or something but for my situation it was the builder who was dating a, a lady that worked in a chip shop with me And he he was like really cool, and he you know he used uh, 
I kind of looked up to him and admired him because he was so confident within himself and with the ladies. He was just, which just things that, that everyone seemed to really like him and found him attractive and that. And I liked that because I was 17 or 16. 16? 17? Yeah, I probably would have been 16 at that time. And I wanted to be like that. I wanted to be attractive to my, well, I'd have been happy just for one lady. I, I didn't need a harem. You know, I wanted a harem, but I didn't need a harem. It's, uh, but, um, <laughs> I had, so I had a flat top, so basically the hairstyle was, I tell you who had a flat top, and that's no lie. I tell you who. Do you remember Rocky IV? And Drago, I think it's Drago, the the boxer that fought Rocky. He had a flat top. So with the hair, and it's kind of uh, short at the side, short at the back, went up, and it was flat on the top. It really was um, very basically explained. You know, I want a flat top. Well, what does that involve? Well, it's flat at the top. Oh, okay. So I had a flat top. And, yeah, I was fairly pleased with that. But that's when I realised that actually a haircut doesn't make the cut. You know, you need a little bit more than just a hairstyle doesn't make the man. Or, you know, so I said I said to him, I said to this bloke, I said, Look, I've got me a haircut like you. How come you're more successful? You know, what else could you think I could do? He said, Well, you could try washing. You know, so you weren't so smelly. I said, Oi. He said, I'm just kidding. But I did smell, but not of. I smelled of chips. So I had, a, I had a bath every single morning. And I just stunk of working there. It's part of. It's the same as you work in any, probably any takeaway, um, like fast food place. You're gonna smell like the food that you're cooking. Um, or if you're a dustman or dust person, you smell like dustbins. It's you know it's just part of the job, isn't it? If you someone worked at a butcher's or someone worked at a bakery. You're gonna kind of smell like the bread, or you know whatever you're working with. I suppose if you work on a farm, you're gonna smell like farm animals, and if you work with wood, you're gonna have that woody smell. And uh, if you work with tables. And kitchens, you know, it doesn't work, does it? Yeah, but you know what I mean. If you work with, if you're a pilot, you're gonna smell like a pilot. No, I wonder if bus drivers smell like buses. Yeah. So, yeah, I did stink a bit, but it wasn't my fault, you know. It's and I think when I went out, I would have a bath before going out in the evening, if I kind of went out to the pub or whatever. And then I'd wear clean clothes and, you know, but it's almost like the smell just followed me around. It's like the grease, well, it wasn't grease, it was oil, but just the general mixture of all the different lovely aromas. The thing is, 
I've never once walked past a chip shop and thought, ugh, what a horrible smell. I've always walked past a fish and chip shop thinking, mmm, now that's got my taste buds excited. But for some reason, I didn't seem to have that smell. The nice smell. Which is weird, I don't know why. And, uh, yeah, I wish I'd been... I kind of... He gives this bloke, he was a builder, and... Because that was my first thing that I wanted to do. And one well, of the first thing I wanted to do, I, I, I wanted to be a policeman. When I was about 11, I decided I wanted to be a policeman. And the, I think, yeah, because the school had, uh, it was almost like a career day, but kind of, it's for fun. You know, because at 11, it's a long way off, isn't it? Because I didn't, you don't get to do your, your first proper exams till you're 16. And then maybe go on to A levels, 17 to 18, and then go to university, you know. So, depending on, you know, what process you go down. But I thought, I want to be a, I want to be a, a police, want to be a policeman. And it's really weird because I remember saying I want to be a policeman and everyone was fine with it. Then suddenly this, um, it's like this big sparkle, like an electric in the corner of the room and suddenly appeared this little box and someone walked out of the box. I opened it up like a little machine thing. And the person said, uh, excuse me, I said, yeah. He said, sorry to interrupt, but don't you mean police officer? I said, what? I said, don't you mean police officer? It's not policeman, that's sexist. It's police officer. I said, who are you? And he said to me, I'm from the future. I'm from 2019. We don't use words like police man anymore or police woman anymore. It's police officer. I said, yeah, but you're telling me that you created a time machine. And you chose to use it to come back and pick me up on a faux pas. And he, he said, well, what's a faux pas? I said, well, perhaps while you're reading, you know, your future books on time travel, pick up a dictionary. He laughed. I laughed. We all shared some corned beef sandwiches. When they were finished, he went away, disappeared back to where he came from, wherever that was. A very strange day. I'm not sure that might be the day that I got home and my dad had bought, he got a billiards table. Is it billiards or pool? No, billiards. Billiards has got the numbers on. And that was a good day that was. I remember that bit. I've forgotten about the time traveller. But I remember the billiards. Yeah. That's one of my, one of my happier memories. Coming home. And... Me and my other brothers were there, 
and my dad was in a good mood and us kids were all getting on with each other and suddenly we had this big billiards table which also had a table tennis table that could fit over the top which you know, we could take off and on as as we needed for I mean for example when we wanted to play uh, billiards we would need to take the table tennis table off of the billiards table because there was no other way of reaching the balls but when we didn't want to play billiards and we wanted to play table tennis we'd put the table tennis table and slot it over the top of the billiards table because um, it's difficult to play tennis when the the table tennis table is just leaning against the wall it's highly irregular so uh, that's what we used to do and I can't remember if I was able to do it all by myself because it was a heavy table and I think even the table tennis table was pretty heavy and quite big so I don't know if I was able to carry it myself I have this uh, mild recollection of something that probably never happened but I can't remember standing one side of the table because there was four sides because I guess it was rectangular it wasn't square but it was two of the sides were longer uh, than the other two sides which were shorter so I would stand on one side of the longer sides and I would push up so that the that part of the table tennis table would move up and I'd just let it slide slowly so that it eventually the other side of the table the long side slowly reached the floor and then I would just push it so it leant up against the wall now I'm pretty sure I still needed to push it along so it was further along the room um, because otherwise it might have got in the way of the um, pool table or the pool playing but we also had snooker as well so we had snooker balls and I used to know how to play snooker and I used to remember what order the balls went into pockets I know does it the reds go in first and then I think it's yellow next um, okay, and I might be wrong but yellow brown, green, blue, or it might be yellow, green, brown, blue, yellow, green, brown, blue, um, then pink, then black, I think. I'm pretty sure that black, pink, blue. I'm sure, pretty sure it's that order in 
it's definitely yellow first. Pretty sure it's brown, then green, then blue, then... Is there an orange? There's no orange, is there? So yellow, so all the reds, I forget how many there are, is it nine or ten? And yellow, brown, green, blue, um, pink, and black. Black's the last ball to be potted finally. But if you pocket any of the other balls, once you've pocketed all the reds, you can pocket, if I remember rightly, you can pocket any of the other balls and any ball that's above the ball that's left. So it, so it's yellow is the next one to pocket but you can pocket the black and that goes back onto the table and then you go back to the yellow again try and get that in and also with the reds is that right you can you can hit a red in and then you can go for a coloured ball and hit that in. And then you need the, the coloured ball. So at that point, they all have to stay on the table. So whichever one you pocketed goes back on the table. And then you pocket another red and go for another colour. And you just do that until the... Um, all of the reds are pocketed I don't remember the score don't remember the score in of snooker but is it 180? 180. But I didn't play snooker very often. I quite liked table tennis. Oh, for those that don't know what table tennis is, it's ping pong. So it uses ping pong balls. And you can, the rules, um, I don't know really what the rules are. I just need to keep the ball going. Uh, you know, keep hitting the ball back, and if someone hits the ball and it touches, well, it doesn't even have to touch the table. Basically, if you if you miss it, then you lose a point. But I don't really remember the pointing system of table tennis. No, I don't remember the pointing system of 
table tennis. I might look into it just out of interest. always seem to beat me at most games that we played so I prefer to play on my own I always like playing with myself. Although it's quite difficult with table tennis or ping pong because you really need to hit the ball very slowly and very softly. in order to give yourself time to run around to the other side of the table to return the serve very slowly and very softly as you run around to the next the other side and hit it back Ironically, even though I play with myself quite often, I still didn't win all the games. I set up a tournament for myself. I came fifth. It was good times. I like the idea of having something like that, you know, like a playroom. could have a snooker table in my living room but it would take up most of the space which isn't really Deal.
I'll speak to you very soon. Please remember to be kind to yourself. Because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love.